Well, economic challenges have forced a slew of companies to make tough decisions this year, including several news and media outlets. Disney, BuzzFeed, or an insider, BuzzFeed, I should say, an insider among those making staff cuts while Vice reportedly close to filing for bankruptcy protection. Joining us now is Ben Smith, Semaphore editor-in-chief and author of the book Traffic, which, by the way, hit shelves earlier this week. Uh, ben, it's good to talk to you. Uh, really fascinating topic here. certainly makes sense for you to be. You were at the center of a lot of these media deals that you specifically address in the book. But I'm curious to get your take about the media landscape right now. We just highlighted some big changes that are happening with the big media companies, but also these upstarts, the disruptors, not necessarily churning out the way they used to. I mean, what do you make of the shakeup that's happening across the media landscape right now? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, thanks for having me on. And it's, I mean, it's a, obviously a tough economic moment for a lot of companies. And so you're sort of seeing layoffs, seeing, you know, difficult choices for, for that reason. But I mean, the biggest picture for, for digital media really particularly is just that these big bets on a certain kind of internet business that was based on traffic, that was based particularly on this huge surge of traffic that came from Facebook and from social media, you know, that that, that the world has gone in a different direction and that and that companies that were made, particularly that placed these huge bets on the social web in the 2010s, like BuzzFeed, where I was, and that, you know, that reached enormous numbers of people and built huge brands. First, didn't we didn't find we could build businesses on top of Facebook. And then you were seeing, and then watched as Facebook start. I think started to decline itself, the app, and and turned away from news entirely. So Ben, clearly, you don't think those models are working or working as effectively as they had been over the last decade or so. So what does that mean that as to what is working now, and how does Twitter and the landscape there and the changes that Musk has implemented, how does that play in the future of media, if at all? Yeah, I mean Twitter, right? Twitter had kind of been the beating part of news and a great place to go if you just wanted to know what was happening in the world. Now, if you look at Twitter, you find out what is happening at Twitter, which is often hilarious and interesting, but kind of a different thing. Um, and I think a lot of consumers, I mean, I'll speak for myself as a consumer, feel really, really overwhelmed by the amount of incoming, but unsure of what to trust. And I think the a, a lot of the what's new are, are outlets where they're putting trusted individual journalists forward and where they're trying to you know, trying to distill a lot of the, you know, the many, many sources out there for consumers who feel really just sort of unsure and, and shaken by just the amount of incoming, by the chaos on social media. I mean, that leads us to your latest venture. You started Semaphore. And I have to wonder, just after your experiences in other media outlets, why you started Semaphore and what it is about that model that you think is going to work in this environment? Yeah, you know, I've been, you know, I've I've been the media columnist for the New York Times for a couple of years, sort of throwing stones at other people's glass houses. And, and you know, it's interesting when actually when I went back to write this book, Traffic, like I sort of saw this moment of massive change in the early 2000s when people were very unsatisfied with the media market. They were with the media they were getting, the news they were getting, were looking for something different. And this is a very different moment, but it does have that in common. If you go out and ask people like, do you love the news environment? Do you like what you're getting? Do you feel like you it's helping you understand the world? People really say no. And I think that is an opportunity to try to, you know, to try to focus on solving those specific problems for people. In the title of your book, you talk about the billion dollar race to go viral. A lot of that, though, plays back to what happens on social media. So if we're kind of moving away from being so reliant on social media, what is that, I guess, race to go viral or to get consumers' attention? What does that then look like? I mean, it's so different. It's so weird for somebody who did like kind of come up in that social media age. I mean, I think things go less viral now and, and it's... and where it used to be everybody was on one or two platforms talking about the same things. Now people are listening to different podcasts, reading different newsletters, not necessarily in agreement on what, on even what is the biggest story in the world, much less what to think about it. It's a much more splintered environment. You know, these these companies like BuzzFeed, like Vice, took hundreds of millions of dollars of investment. And, we, and I think we thought we were kind of racing to a kind of huge scale. I think for, you know, for Semaphore and for other companies, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to, begin by really finding an audience who's we, we feel very directly connected to, but I think aren't under the illusion that, that it's going to all happen quite so fast. Yeah, I mean, you talk about that splintered environment. It certainly does feel like 
increasingly, you know, we've got, I mean, I can't count how many newsletters I get in my inbox in the morning. We're choosing who to follow. Hope we've got trust from Semaphore. <laughs> I don't know about eight of them. One of them is from Semaphore for sure. But, you know, you talk about this age of disinformation. There's so much distrust within or among media or within media. I mean, how do you restore that trust if it feels like readers and viewers, if you want to broaden it out, are kind of in their corners right now? Yeah, and I don't think it's something you can wave a magic wand, right? Like there's been declining trust in institutions all over the world and institutions of all sorts. So this isn't something where like, if you just did slightly better journalism, you would reverse this like 50 year global trend. Um, but I, I mean, our experience is that people want to hear from individuals who, you know, and who also are pretty careful. And we are very obsessed with distinguishing the facts from our from our point of view, our opinion, and bringing in points of view that disagree. And I think to try to say, look, there's some level of shared facts that we can agree on, even if we're not expecting everybody to agree on all the interpretations and all the narratives. Ben Smith, author of Traffic, also founder of Semaphore. Uh, great to have you on today.